Well, good morning and uh, thank you once again for coming to this uh, uh, regular media, media, media briefing uh, on what appears to be a very, well, what is a very cold Christchurch day. Hopefully we don't have too many more of these before we start seeing a little bit of spring weather. Uh, I don't have any particular announcement to make this morning on behalf of the government, uh, but we do have some uh, briefings that will bring you up to date in a little uh, more fulsome way from EQC uh, and from Roger's team as well. I think one of the things that I would observe is that the successful release yesterday by the City Council of the CBD plan um, I think indicates that we are taking uh, small but significant steps towards uh, our recovery and I look forward to the public engagement on that and ultimately uh, being able to sign off on a plan that will give Christchurch a very clear blueprint uh, for moving forward. First of all I was going to announce um, the appointment today of Steve Wakefield as our General Manager Economic Recovery. We've been working through a process to try and get my, my next level of managers appointed. And Steve is leaving a, or taking a leave of absence from Deloitte where he's been um, the Senior Christchurch person for the last five years. So I think this shows a real commitment from, from Steve to come in and join the team. We're very, very excited to have him and I think he's going to make a very major contribution I was also um, going to announce today that Warwick Isaac, who you all know, he's been appointed to the role of um, General Manager Demolitions, and Warwick will be here later on. He's just bringing the he's run bringing the PM in this morning. And the third appointment is Michelle Mitchell. Uh, Michelle, um, her permanent role was Regional Commissioner for um, MS, MSD, and she's been on my team since the beginning. And in fact, she worked for the Canterbury Earthquake Commission um, prior to the February 22nd quake. So that's three of my key uh, managers being appointed this week. So that's very, very exciting. Um, the other thing I was going to talk about was we're trying to get more information out there on the geotechnical stuff. We'll be making some YouTube videos about um, the geotech issues. And they'll be up on the CERA website um, um, later on this afternoon. And they give people a real feel for what, what these um, issues mean in terms of the geotech stuff, trying to understand and explain what liquefaction is, what, um, what a thick crust means, what a thin crust means. Um, and we've got cakes and cream as well as actual field trips to try and explain to people what some of these mechanisms are because I think a lot of people are really quite confused about what these land issues really mean. So we're trying to get that communication a form that people can understand and then we are also can hear back from people about what are the other questions they want us to cover in these YouTube videos because it's important they do understand these issues. And maybe now if there are no questions for me immediately, I'll hand over to Ian Simpson from EQC. Roger, can you just say what uh, Michelle Mitchell's role is? So Michelle's role is General Manager Social Wellbeing. So her key role is working with things like the, um, the social agencies, with the faith-based agencies, with other NGOs, making sure we deliver to the people. So an example of the work she did after we announced the 5,000 um, red zone houses, she, with her team, with all those faith-based organisations, the NGOs, we door knocked every single one of those houses within two and a half days. So she's just generally thinking about the social wellbeing and how we deliver good service to all those people. Ian Simpson. Morning. So, um, EQC, we've received uh, 385,000 claims to date. And if you break those down into the individual exposures of building, contents, and land, that's 570,000 claims. Uh, we've paid out $1.35 billion. Um, in terms of repair pro process, uh, through the Fletcher's Group, we've, we've uh, managed the repair of uh, the emergency repair of 22,000 homes. That's to keep them watertight. Uh, warm and secure. Uh, we've paid for another 30,000 repairs through our, through our um, emergency repair process, uh, installed 10,000 um, heating devices. Uh, focus now is completing the assessment process, so we've got 500 assessors in the field. They're split between the orange zones and the white zones, so we've got half the team in, in the orange zones and we're on course to complete those assessments within the next couple of weeks. The other half of the, of the assessment teams are in the green zone, assessing the, the, uh, the damage there so we can prime the Fletcher's uh, rebuild uh, program over the next, uh, the next few years. Um, the other focus is of course on contents. 
We've got um, 128,000 contents claims that we need to um, to uh, close out before our target date of Christmas. Um, of those, we're still awaiting schedules of, of details of the claim for about 78,000 of those claims. So the priority now is to get so outbound call to call people to let them know we haven't got the details we need and to make sure we get those details uh, details coming through. So uh, the winter heat program, um, we've installed 7,000 heat pumps and we've installed uh, around 3,000 uh, log burners uh, based on the request of the individual. Um, there, are, there are another, I think another 5,000 of those devices on order. So we've done everything we can to get out there and make sure that everyone has at least one form of heating in the house so that nobody stays cold over the next, uh, the next few months. Hey, and just on the contents, sorry to go back, um, how many have been paid in the last month or since um, Gail Kevin said that you're sort of ratcheting up the contents? Uh, we've paid 25,000 in total. Um, I don't have the number just for the last month. The issue we have there is, I mean, so for example, last week we paid 13, we closed 1,300 contents claims, but that's after calling, making 3,600 calls. So we have to call out to people and get them to send us the details so we've got that conversion rate to, to get through. Sure. And the ones that have sent all their details and all their receipts and all their quotes and everything, and are you paying that? So in total we've had uh, around 50,000 claims where we've got the details and we've paid about half of those so far. Uh, we've ratcheted up the team and we're looking now at getting even more people in place to accelerate that progress even further. So how many people in total? So at the moment there are just over 100 people on the team and uh, today I'm expecting a plan to see how much we can increase that, possibly doubling that team in terms of it really increasing the rate that we're getting through the claims. That we're absolutely at the transition point now. So we're still receiving around 1,500 requests for emergency repairs every week, which given we're so far beyond the date of you know, even the June earthquake, that seems to be, it should be drawing to a close now. So we're working with Fletcher's on the programme for the next three or four years which will be the major rebuild. They've started but the, the focus so far has been on the emergency repairs. We shouldn't forget the task we've now got is twice as big as the task we ran the tender process for. So when we ran the tender process back in September for a project management, an organisation to run the project management office, that was to repair around 50,000 houses. Based on the three large events we've now got, we're now looking at a repair process for 100,000 houses and we're working through revising the plans to make sure we can get the labour in place to complete that in a reasonable time frame. In terms of getting the labour, um, how much will the labour force rely on overseas workers and what's being done to bring them in? So we're working on concentric circles. We know there is a lot of labour available still in Canterbury that we need to be tapping into more quickly. So we're starting with Canterbury, then South Island, then the rest of New Zealand, and then we'll start to go overseas. We have made initial approaches in places like Ireland, where we know there's you know, similar, well, English speaking, uh, large unemployment rate of, uh, of skilled workers, so we can bring those people in when we need them. And do you know how many you might be bringing in from Ireland, for example? It'll depend on the work plan that we bring through. Um, in total, we'll need a labour force of something like 8,000 people in terms of skilled skilled workforce. And how many have we got now? Do you know? Um, Is there a big shortfall? Um, there will be a shortfall and there will be a need. Uh, I wouldn't like to sort of speculate on that number just now. We're still doing the work on that. Even 8,000 builders? Uh, builders, planters, plumbers, finishing trades, carpenters, all the, all the skills that we need to, uh, to rebuild this, uh, this project. That's within the EQC, that's within the PMO run by Fletcher's, just within the EQC residential repair. There'll be additional needs in terms of the commercial rebuild, in terms of the other insurers' rebuilds as well.